Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all well um, on this sunny September day. So um, in this uh, weekly wisdom I want to talk about how to stock a home apothecary and obviously you can't generalise on that because everyone's health requirements and I guess Achilles heels are very different, everyone's got their own weaknesses and predispositions. Um, but what I want to do is talk about a core collection of herbs and um, there's quite a famous saying within Western herbal medicine, which is a sign of a great herbalist or a home herbalist, is not knowing how to use 40 herbs, but to how to use one herb in 40 different ways. And in, in, in part, I really subscribe to that because you know we've got a, full, a fully stocked apothecary purely because we have a clinic. But if we didn't have that, I was, when I was thinking about this yesterday, you know, what herbs would we stock? What tonics? would we grow, forage and buy that I think would, that would provide probably all of the herbal support we need to manage our home and friends and family and neighbours in a domestic situation. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, you know, how, what, what, kind of, what are the core herbs? What are the key herbs we should be stocking? Why? What do they address? And looking at, some, looking at something called herbal synergy. Because the beauty of herbal synergy is rather than having to buy you know, 40 or 50 herbs, there's a core collection of herbs that will address multiple issues. Um, classic examples, things like echinacea, things like yarrow, things like sage, things like peppermint, things like ashwagandha, those kinds of herbs, they are multifactorial. They will, they can be, you, you can use them in lots of different systems of the body and in managing lots of different ailments. Um, so in terms of you guys, you know, becoming home herbalists or village herbalists where you're, you're stocking your apothecary with a core collection that will make you really effective, it will allow you to really effectively and reactively manage home health crises, whether it's colds or flus or sinusitis or arthritis or stress or whatever it may be. Um, and I'm going to firstly talk about what herbs I think we should stock. We don't need to get all of these in one go, but I think this is what we should be building up to. So you open up your apothecary and these are the, the tonics and the herbs you've got access to. Talk about what they are, what herbs we've got, and then talk about why we've chosen them. Okay. So I've broken it down into tinctures, dried herbs, tonic remedies, culinary herbs, and capsules. Okay, and I, I'm pretty sure with these, or a selection of these, you're pretty much going to be able to tick all boxes. So firstly, tinctures. I think there's four tinctures you would do really well to stock. Um, we talk about these quite a lot in the ailment management plans. Um, so I think Echinacea, Californian Poppy, Astragalus, and St. John's Wort. Having those in a one to three tincture, you can get them from Rutland Biodynamics, you can get them from Indigo, you can get them from Baldwin's, really easy to source. If you've got those, I think having Echinacea tincture in is really, really important because it can be pressed into service in lots of different areas. Um, Astragalus as well is a, is a key, key tonic herb. So I think there are four tinctures that are important. Dry herbs. I've gone for more dried herbs than tinctures. One, because using herbs in infusions is such a great way of getting the benefits. And two, you can make tinctures from dried herbs, but you can't make, you obviously can't make dried herbs from tinctures. So if you've got more dried herbs, you can do anything with it. You can make herbal honeys, you can make herbal ointments, you can make tinctures, you can make infusions, but you can't do that the other way around. So it's better to have more dried herbs. And these, these are really key, these are, these are the ones that I would be stocking if, if I was you know, coming to this from a, a, a beginner's, you know, or not a beginner's place, but starting off in my herbal journey. So yarrow, elderflower, peppermint, sage, chamomile, comfrey, calendula, dandelion, valerian, and Californian poppy. Um, and the other beauty of those herbs is that they're largely forageable or growable. Okay, if you think about those herbs over the course of a year, a growing year and a foraging year, um, a lot of those will be free. You know, and that creates herbal sustainability and self-sufficiency. We're not dependent upon supply chains or, or things like that. You know, yarrow is everywhere at the moment. Um, 
I was, I was just thinking to you, I, I can't see the, the computer, um, so I can't answer questions, but hello everyone who's joining us. And if you've got a question about any of this, just uh, post it up and Holly will read them out at the end, okay? So feel free to ask questions if, you, if you've got any. So yeah, yarrow, your yarrow is growing absolutely abundantly right now. You can get it in abundance. You could probably forage and dry enough yarrow in an afternoon to see you through winter. Elderflower, we've missed the boat for that. Uh, that comes, you know, that's in April and May, um, but you can buy that very easily online as a dried herb. Peppermint is, is, is prolific. You can grow that and, and supply yourself with that very easily. Sage likewise, camomile likewise. Comfrey uh, is, is, in, is optimal foraging season now for comfrey. It's everywhere, it's big, it's healthy. Um, check out the Comfrey um, at her profile on, on the website to see how to use that. Calendula grows very easily. Dandelion you can get now. Valerian you can grow or buy. And Californian poppy you can grow or buy. So all of those, you know, they're very accessible and easy. In terms of the tonics that I think we should, we should be stocking, tonics, your herbal tonics are preparations that you make. They're not pure tinctures or pure dried herbs. They're ones that you blend. And I think if you've got elderberry syrup, if you've got the Four Thieves vinegar, if you've got the rose hip syrup, the hawthorn leather, the comfrey ointment, and the calendula oil, that ticks most of the body systems we're going to talk about in a minute. And I think the Four Thieves, you know, I know I keep on waxing on about it, you know, but it's it's just such a brilliant, brilliant tonic herb. Um, remedy to have in, particularly as we move into into autumn and winter. So I think they're they're key. I think in terms of the culinary herbs, you'll probably have a lot of those in anyway. But the the CCFT that we spoke about in the kitchen herbal medicine series, coriander seeds, cumin seeds, and fennel seeds, so many health uh, health benefits, particularly in the in the arena or the context of digestive health. Black pepper is really really important. Turmeric is important and fresh ginger, making sure that in the same way when you do your shopping, you might always buy milk or you might always buy apples or toilet paper or whatever it is, your staple, just make sure you always add fresh ginger into your shopping list because it's something that we can just use in so many ways. And then I've spoken about capsules. And I think if you're gonna have a couple of herbs that are best used in capsule form and primarily tonic herbs like ashwagandha or gaduchi, or Shatavari, okay, the really powerful um, or whole body tonic herbs, and that, or even things like ginseng to a degree, okay. So you don't need, like I say, to, to go out and get all of those. I mean, the elderberry syrup you can make now because the elderberries are in. The four thieves vinegar, um, you know, is easy. The rose hips you can make now from foraged herbs, um, the hawthorn berry leather you can make from forage hawthorn berries, the comfrey ointment you can make from forage comfrey. Um, so th this is, it looks like quite a lot, but actually economically it's, it's, it's very, very doable and actually quite cheap to, to stock. So you know, what I would say is that if over the coming months, if you can get to a point where you're opening up your apothecary and this is what you've got access to, or the, the bulk of that, it means that you can then target the really key problems you're likely to encounter. You know, thinking about your household, your family, friends over the course of a year, what kinds of ailments are we most likely to, you're gonna to need to manage? We're not talking about the really specific things like a bladder infection, although we could address that, but you know, we're not talking about very specific, we're talking about broad here. We're talking about broad ailments that respond incredibly well to herbal intervention um, that you're likely to have to manage. So. I was thinking about it yesterday and thinking about you know, what are these kinds of conditions. I've tried to break it down into the respiratory system and the immune system, probably the biggest area. That's where you know, home herbalism reaps dividends because that's the most, you know, colds and, and respiratory infections are the most common pathology on the planet. Bronchitis, sinusitis, colds, flu, those kinds of things. Your nervous system disorders, low mood, anxiety, stress, depression, overwhelm, insomnia, those kinds of things. Your pain, your pain and inflammatory conditions, headaches, migraines, inflammatory problems, joint problems, musculoskeletal problems, sports injuries, toothaches, those kinds of things. A lot of digestive approaches, di digestive dysfunction is really common. 
your irritable, ir irritable bowel, um, bowel syndrome, your IBS, bloating, cramping, distension, colicky pain, diarrhea, gastric infest, uh, infections, gastroenteritis, reflux, heartburn, um, uh, those kinds of things. Then skin health uh, and first aid, things like you know cuts, bruises, stings, burns, and then um, your energy and vitality tonics. For if, if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling run down, if you're feeling exhausted, physically or mentally. So for the respiratory and immunity side, echinacea. Yeah, I think everyone knows about echinacea, but it's really important to not let, I guess, familiarity breed contempt with an echinacea because it is so powerful. It's so effective. It's clinically proven in, in the prevention and treatment of respiratory infections. And it's, it, you, if you've got an infection coming, it, it's best in tincture form because you can get up to maximum dose very, very quickly. It's really, it's absorbed very, very effectively. Echinacea is more effective using it in, in tincture form. You can check out the Echinacea Herb Profile for more information. Um, so at the first sign of an infection, first sign of a, uh, an immune crisis, you start your Echinacea tincture. So then you need, if you look at, if you look at, you know, you're a home herbalist managing these kinds of problems, there's three things you need to be doing. You need to clear the infection, you need to alleviate the symptoms, and you need to speed up recovery. So an echinacea does all three of those, but to alleviate the symptoms, yarrow, elderflower, and peppermint is the, is the, is the golden trilogy because they clear mucus, they thin down mucus, they're decongesting, they're expectorating, they reduce, uh, they break fevers, they reduce the aches and pains of infection. So having those as strong, hot teas is brilliant. And then you've got something like the Four Thieves or the Elderberry Syrup that you can use you know, as tonic, you know, tonic remedies to really blitz the infection. So if you've got a selection of those in, that's gonna cover, uh, you know, largely cover your winter health, immune health, respiratory health um, box. You know, if your friends, family, husbands, wives, whoever comes down with sore throat, tonsillitis, uh, colds, flus, then you can turn to those to manage those, and that's in a very, very effective and evidence-based way. For your things like your nervous system disorders, your stress, your anxiety, your insomnia, Ashwagandha is a, is is a, an all encompassing herb. You know, it's clinically proven in all of those areas. It's clinically proven to elevate mood, reduce anxiety, facilitate deeper sleep. So that's I think having that having ashwagandha in capsule form is really really key. I think having chamomile and valerian in uh, in dry form, and that's on that list there. Chamomile and valerian makes brilliant teas to drink before bed. Um, Chamomile is, is good because we're using it in lots of other areas. And St. John's Wall, the reason I put that on is that if you're, you don't necessarily need it in if you've got no history or risk factors or predispositions to depression, but if you do, if you're someone who recognizes their mood dropping or dipping and as a bit of a weakness in, in your makeup, then having St. John's Wall in is a really good way of just buffering against that. You can feel a rough patch coming, um, you know, start the St. John's Wall, and it's, it's best in tincture. Uh, form in that capacity. So um, if you've got a selection of those in, you can cover all of those emotional problems and symptoms very, very effectively. Um, for your pain-based problems, your headaches, neuralgia, nerve pain, sports injuries, repetitive strain injuries, bursitis, tendonitis, all of these kinds of things, Californian poppy is a must. Californian poppy is a cousin of the opium poppy. Um, it's got a lot of the benefits and none of the risks. It's not addictive. Um, it's not, you know, it's not that, it's not as powerful, but it's still a very, very clinically proven analgesic. So for headaches, any kind of pain in the body, the Californian poppy is gonna block the pain messages. So really, really great for anything you would use um, Nurofen or a painkiller for, Californian poppy is gonna tick the box. Um, and having turmeric, your know, turmeric is a powerful anti-inflammatory that's brilliant for arthritis, joint problems, anywhere there's inflammation in the body. Hawthorn, and likewise, because it's such a great joint and inflammatory tonic herb. And having comfrey, having the comfrey ointment is just the number one topical treatment for any trauma, damage, injury that you can apply topically onto the area. Anything, doesn't matter what it is. If it's a fracture, a strain, a ligament tear, a bruise, any, any trauma to the, to the musculoskeletal system, comfrey 
will significantly impact upon the healing time. We then got your digestive issues. You know, IBS is one of the most common complaints or ailments in the community. Most people suffer from things like bloating or cramping or digestive discomfort. Um, chamomile, and here this is why I'm talking about herbal synergy. We've got, we've got peppermint there, we've got yarrow there, we've got chamomile there. So rather than using different herbs to address these issues, we're using the same herbs. So it means you've got to use less herbs, you've got to buy less herbs or grow less herbs. Um, which is just a great way of, of, of expanding and learning how to use herbs effectively. So if you've got those kinds of problems, chamomile tea, peppermint tea, um, using fresh ginger, using the CCF tea, the coriander, cumin, fennel seed tea, is gonna take control of that. If you, if, you know, with winter coming, it's not just respiratory infections, we've also got you know, the, the increased risk of gastric infections, gastroenteritis, those kinds of things. And, People often don't treat those. If you get a respiratory infection, people reach for the, you know, the echinacea and the elderberry, but you can really effectively manage gastroenteritis. You know, gastroenteritis or gut infections, they're caused by bacteria or viruses. So they will respond to things like your echinacea. Echinacea works because it's antibacterial and antiviral. It will be just as antibacterial and antiviral in the digestive tract as it is in the respiratory tract. So if you've got an infection, use the echinacea to clear out the bacteria or the virus. You know, use your, your yarrow. You know, yarrow is great for diarrhea because it astringes the bowel, it dries up the bowel, and it helps to protect the bowel from inflammation and damage. You know, if you've got nausea or vomiting, sipping on ginger or, or peppermint or chamomile can really help settle the stomach and alleviate the symptoms. Um, likewise, chamomile and peppermint for reflux and acidity. You know, that the, if, you, if you're thinking digestive system, chamomile and peppermint are calming, they're cooling, they're soothing, they're anti-inflammatory. So there, you, know, you, can, you can use those in many, many different ways. Um, for your, your herbal first aid, for things like skin health, whether it's eczema, psoriasis, hives, acne, or whether it's things like stings, burns, bruises, bites, then it's you know, your calendula. Your calendula is the number one skin topical first aid treatment in the whole of glo uh, global herbal medicine. You check out the calendula herb profile on the webpage. I think if you've got the calendula oil, you know, if, you, if, you, if you buy the flowers dried, you can get them online really easily, make your oil, put it in your apothecary once it's ready, you, you'll be using it again and again and again. We use comfrey ointment and calendula oil on, you know, in our household on a daily basis. The kids are always coming in with scrapes and injuries and stings and all the rest of it. So that's brilliant for that. And then lastly, for the, you know, particularly in winter coming, as, the, as a, a whole body, full body energy tonic. If we're feeling we need a bit of a kick, we need a bit more vitality, if we're feeling a bit run down, a bit tired, a bit fatigued, a bit lethargic, we want to use those really strong, tonifying herbal medicines. Um, and they're best used in capsule form because they're, they're usually roots and they're not, they're not conducive to using in teas. So having something like ashwagandha in, having gaduchi in, having astragalus in, having ginseng in, in capsule form, where you can take you know, a couple of thousand milligrams every day over four or six weeks, where well, you can do it long term, but if you're having a bit of a dip, you can use those herbs to really tonify yourself. So if you think about what your requirements are, if you're ticking those boxes, if you can target respiratory immunity, nervous system, pain and, and injury, your kind of digestive tract, your infections, your skin and your energy. You know, it's, it's not everything, but it's most things. They're, they're, they're the kinds of problems that you're most likely to encounter. And if you can open up your apothecary and turn to those, you can manage them. You know, but we've got lots of these herbs are in the herb profiles until you've got the, the uses and how to make medicines from them. We'll be adding more and more as we go down the line. So herbal medicine is a big component of the Ayurvedic Mentor. Um, and, and we've, you know, we're doing a lot on it because it's a real, it's a real source of empowerment. The whole aim of the mentor is to help people take control of their health so that they're not dependent on other people as much. It's really empowering and herbal medicines have a key role to play in that. Um, and as a starting point, this is a great place to play from. Okay, so, um, so look at what you've got here. I know loads of you have been posting up your pictures of your four themes and your elderberry syrup and the, and the like. Um, so have a look at what you've got in now. Think about 
any Achilles heels in your family or your social network? Yeah, are you prone to headaches? Are you prone to colds? Are you prone to sinusitis? And, and tweak, tweak what you're getting based around what you think your requirements are, but just make sure you're not caught short. You know, there's, I think in, in March and April, it was very hard to get lots of these herbs online from, from reputable suppliers because of COVID. With winter cold and flu season coming and a lot of uncertainty around COVID, what you don't want to be is in a situation where November comes around or October comes around, you want to start using these approaches and you can't get them because everyone's bought them. So I would try and get ahead of the game. You know, not saying you've got to get everything, but just make sure you've got a core selection in that you can use so you've got that autonomy, you've got that self-sufficiency, you're not dependent upon anyone else. Um, so look at what you've got in, look at any weaknesses, look at what you haven't got, and maybe just begin to slowly stock that up because it's an incredibly empowering feeling to open up a cupboard, see all these remedies, see the herbs, see the tinctures, and think, that's what I need, I'm in control here. And I love that, and that's a big part of the mentor for me. So I hope that's been helpful. A um, couple of questions. A couple of questions. Uh, can the children have the teas? They can, so chamomile um, and peppermint are brilliant because they're, they're labelled as children's herbs. Chamomile is the number one child herb. So yeah, for things like ear infections, sore throats, colds, you can use chamomile and tea, uh, chamomile and peppermint tea freely. Okay, you know, so absolutely fine for, for children, definitely. Um, I wouldn't use the tinctures and things like that. You can use the elderberry syrup. You can, they're, they're fine for children. Okay, so yeah. Um, do we know how California poppy affects the digestive system from Rebecca? Um, it's, 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 it's well tolerated by the digestive system. It's good for kind of spasms. It's good for cramping. It's good for kind of colicky pain. Um, so it's, it, it brings something to the table in that respect, but it's not going to cause any... If, you, if you're asking it from a point of is it going to cause symptoms or problems, it's definitely not. And it can also help can help settle and soothe the stomach they can really you know, particularly if there's cramps or spasms that come about through things like stress anxiety nervousness it's very good in that in that capacity as well um sue asks i have a valerian plant to harvest but really don't know where to start uh with it as it's the root yeah so we're gonna we're posting so we're um, the Shatavari herb profile will be going live today or tomorrow. The next one's going to be Valerian. The reason for that is you harvest the root in autumn. Okay, the, 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 if you've got Valerian in your garden, underneath, you know, below the surface, there'll be a big uh, root mass. Um, you can only harvest that in the autumn and we'll give you the instructions for how to do that. But it's brilliant you've got Valerian because a little goes a long way. You've got a couple of plants. Once you've, once you've dug it up, cleaned the roots and dried the roots, that will probably see you through, you know, a very long time because there's a lot of root, there's a lot of root structure to each plant. So that's brilliant that you've got valerian growing because to harvest and use your own valerian is infinitely better than buying it. So that's brilliant. So stay tuned. That should be live this week. And um, Helen asks, which uh, ginseng is good for brain health? The Siberian, not the Korean or the Panax ginger um, ginseng. Use the Siberian ginseng. That's the one that's. Yeah, there's third, about 38 years of research around the ability of ginseng to increase things like concentration, mental fatigue, psychometric ability, physical energy, vitality, recovery from exercise, immune counts. So Siberian ginseng is, is, a, is a, such a tonic. Well, actually, ashwagandha is called, is called Indian ginseng because ashwagandha and ginseng, Siberian ginseng, are loosely interchangeable. They share very similar qualities. So... Yeah, in, in that context, get the Siberian ginseng. Um, and then Rebecca just said, uh, yeah, does it cause problems? No, it does, uh, the, uh, the California poppy won't, won't cause any gastric problems. I've never seen it in, do that, and we use it a lot in clinics, so that should be fine. So, um, well, thank you for joining in, signing in to have a watch today. I hope you're all well. Um, like I said, we've got a couple, we've got new ailment plans coming up this month, this week. We've got new herb profiles coming up this week. We've got the next six tastes going live on Thursday um, and a few other bits and pieces. So stay tuned for those. But I really encourage you to, to get going with this and just make sure you're prepared and stock for, for the coming winter um, because it's important. So um, any questions, do let us know. But have a lovely day, everyone.